All right, folks, what is up? This is One Big Bugger, and I am coming at you with League of Legends, the unsung hero of the ARAM series. And in this one, I will be playing Kog'Maw. And I have a good upfront team uh, with Jarvan and Scion. We also have Lux and Gragas. But the team we're against is a pretty brutal team. We have LeBlanc, um, who, you know, high damage, high mobility, uh, in this game. We have Karthus with his world alt and his poke and whatnot. We have uh, Sivir who is actually pretty damn strong in an ARAM series. We also have Annie who's always a terror no matter what map she's on. And then we have Soraka who, ha who has the second highest win rate behind Sona. Sona is about 70%. Soraka is around 65%. So we are up against a pretty brutal team. However, that team does lack one major thing, and they, that is they have no tanks. They have nobody up front. So they have a lot of damage, they have a lot of killing potential, but they don't have that hard engage, and they don't have that hard disengage. So that could easily play into the lap of my team. However, that's not to say this is going to be an easy fight. So I start off immediately with the Recurve Bow. I also get the Fairy Charm and the Rejuve Bead for mana and health regen, even if it's just a little bit. And I also pick up three health pots. So, why do I start off with the Recurve Bow? Well, I'm going for the, uh, the Razor in this game. I forget exactly what it's called, because uh, I don't build it too often. But combining Kog'Maw's W with the Razor and a um, Blade of the Ruined King makes for a brutal health ripping machine. Yes, in this Kogma, I get to go a D rather than a P. And I always feel like that's how Kogma is meant to be played, going a D with the attack speed and range and just what he can do. He's a great tank shredder, and if you don't have tanks, he can be just an all out brutal murderer. The hard part about Kog'Maw is knowing just, you know, when to die, basically. That's the way I look at it. You know, it's basically, if you think you're going to get out with low health, especially in ARAM, if you're going to have really low health, or you're going to have, or, you know, you're pretty sure you're going to die, don't try and run and hope for a way to escape. Sometimes it's better off just to stand your ground and fight and then use your passive to blow up on somebody. And that's going to be a common theme that you saw right there with LeBlanc jumping forward, pulling off a combo, and then leaping back. It becomes extremely annoying. And she becomes, I don't know who was playing her, but they're very adept at that combo and picking people off so I give props to the LeBlanc in this game you know LeBlanc's not bad in this game she is extra squishy uh, no matter which way you look at it so in truth it can be quite difficult using her especially she's not used that often but you know much like other high uh, skill cap level champions high risk high reward high damage this LeBlanc you know did in my opinion fairly well you know, other people may sit there and go, man, that LeBlanc's just sucked. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, well, maybe she did in the overall. But in terms of what I see normally, which is a lot of LeBlancs who just get themselves destroyed because they try and go for things that they're not quite sure how to do, this LeBlanc did pretty well. And excuse me for a minute while I grab some water. My mouth is drying out. So not much going on right now. Yes, they do have the better poke team. However, we do have a little bit more CC. Actually, we have a lot more CC considering they don't really have any. And, you know, that is in uh, the Scion stun. And, man, I should not have taken the double hit from that. But that's the Scion stun. The Jarvan engage with his Dragon Strike. And then, of course, we have Lux, who's a CC machine. And I think my team was knocking Lux in this game. And I don't blame them to an extent because, well, she, I think if this is the game I recall, she didn't do all that great in terms of what she's doing. But people got to keep in mind, this is ARAM. It's very common to get champions you don't know how to play, especially when they're free. 
And so you do the best you can. You know, maybe you don't have a reroll. Maybe you used your last reroll in the last game. That doesn't mean that you sit there and knock someone for not knowing what to do. Only a momentary disconnect for Carthus. And man, that's becoming such a common problem. People disconnecting and 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 the game crashing. Uh, it's kind of annoying, really. And that was a pretty good throw. And looking for a hard engage, and man, just barely getting out. But there we go. Soraka goes down first. And now we're looking to come in, and I throw out the, the little ooze line there to keep them from coming back on my team. By far, I think the biggest danger on the other team will become LeBlanc in, in terms of her ability to assassinate people and just the amount of damage she's able to do. And a great move by Gragas there to be able to finish off Annie, knocking her into the wall. She couldn't move. And then following up with the explosive barrel. And Lux giving her ulti a chance, but no, not being able to pick anything up. So my team ahead at one kill right now, but one kill is not a lot. I've come back from much worse on ARAM. Like I've said before, it's actually easier to come back on an ARAM than it is to come back in a normal game because everyone's right there. It's easy to get caught out of the position and, ooh, just missing Karthus. And, yeah, we lose Lux. We lose Jarvan. And I wanted to get Karthus, but it's not going to work, so I flash... And I am badly hurt as I know that I'm dead at this point. So I just run into the middle of the team and blow up. I throw out what damage I can. I get 25 gold for blowing up LeBlanc's um, clone, but that's basically it. So yeah, our tower is going to suffer at this point. But there we go. I already pick it up. Kitai's Blood Razor, I guess. But getting two kills in return, as what often happens when there's a hard engage and one team beats on the tower for a little while, the other team comes up, manages to uh, get in there and get some kills in return because they're low health. There's a definite tangible back and forth ebb and flow between uh, the teams on ARAM. And you can, I, I can almost feel when another team you know, is going to lose even though they have an advantage because of the way they start acting. They start having to go all the way from their base to the enemy base in order to get the kills. And what they end up doing is they end up kind of trying to string feed in. One or two will get there and then they'll get caught by the other team who's five up and they'll get destroyed and then another, and another one or two will get up in the area and then that just continues to happen and they continue to just slowly feed the other team who then catches up and manages to turn things around. You know, there's little communication um, as it is in League. <clears throat> and right now uh, in ARAM there's even less, you know. And communication can be a big key, especially when you want to choose who you want to go after. You see right there is a prime example of what LeBlanc's going to be doing in terms of being an aggravating pain in the ass in this game. Now with Kogma, his level 1 ulti at Living Artillery, I find it's very hard to nail people with it because of its shorter range. People can, you know, most of the time people can actually see you um, when you go to launch it off. So they know it's coming and it's easier to dodge. I find level 2 and level 3 a lot easier to hit because you have that much more range. So they only have the momentary reaction um, of actually seeing where it's going to hit rather than having that extra little bit of time of when you actually um, see it coming. And we do get uh, 2 there. And we end up losing two, and then myself, and I'm going the wrong way. So I just decide to blow up on Sivir, and that only leaves poor Lux to defend right now by herself. So that's not the greatest thing. I mean, Lux can clear away, but she's nowhere near strong enough right now. 
Uh, Jarvan is on his way, and they don't have the best of tower pushing with Annie and Lux, so that only leaves Sivir, who already went too far and took a lot of tower hits. Unfortunately, though, our tower will fall. So first tower to the enemy team, we're down 11 to 7, and the tower, we're down almost 2,000 gold at this point. But I do pick up the goddess tier. I am going to go for Monomune. I believe that um, unlike the Summoner's Rift and uh, other maps there, that having Kogma using uh, a Monomune is uh, much more important because your living artillery is just that much stronger of a weapon on this map. So having that extra mana to be able to throw it out is really important. And again, there we go, LeBlanc sniping somebody off. And I'm trying to wait until my counter runs off before I spit out another living artillery to keep the mana count low, but I'm really not succeeding as I got the count up to four. So now I'm waiting it out. There we go. Now the count's back down. And there we go, bringing down Soraka Sion, doing a good job, and there's a beautiful ulti, and we get three, and we get four, and I get the shutdown on LeBlanc. So a nice four kill there with beautiful ulti and combination there with Gragas and with Jarvan, and the team just doing a great job, and now we get the chance to hammer out their tower, and we're going to bring their tower down, bringing us back within one kill and actually giving us a slight, and I do mean very slight, gold lead. I'm trying to tag off Annie, but it ain't working. But between the barrel and finally hitting, hitting her with an artillery, um, she does go pack down, even though she grabbed the health sigil. You know, a lot of times it's actually not worth grabbing the health sigil. If you're not sure that you can get in there and grab it and get out without taking too much damage, then it is and sometimes better to let the other guy have it. Now, here's where it actually gets easy to hit Kog'Maw's uh, living artillery, when you're running away. Because the enemy so often will not dodge out of the way. So you can just very easily throw your living artillery down in a straight line path just ahead of wherever they're running and still nail them. Not sure what LeBlanc was thinking, but a little bit further and she'd have been in serious trouble. I move away from LeBlanc, and I was lagging right there, man. I did not mean to barrier. I was hitting barrier because I thought that I was going to get caught, and barrier wasn't coming up, and then finally it popped up long after I needed it. And Gragas Barrel's starting to hurt right now. What's Gragas running at this point? All right, he's already got a needlessly large rod, so he's got some damage in there, but, you know, let's take a look at LeBlanc. She's already got a freaking um, Deathfire Grass, so yeah, <laughs> that's not that's not great right there. We're just trying to land those living artilleries. Is I'm kind of the main source of poke for my team right now. I'm the only one that can reach as far as the rest of them. And yeah, that's going to be the end of Jarvan. I'm trying to encourage my team to build a lot more magic resistant armor. Because the reality is, and I'm dead. Yeah. What else could I do? And I can't. See, that's, that's one of those situations where I should have turned around and gone face into the enemy team. And I didn't. And it was a really, really bad idea. If I had gone face into the enemy team, I could, could have done a lot more damage. So yeah, we're going to lose our tower already. And Jarvan's going to just go in, go right for Annie. And you saw Annie had the heal, so Jarvan's just going to suffer at that point. You know, I'll give him props for trying, but it might have been better off just to let it go. So my team in a definite uh, disadvantage right now. Down seven kills, down a little more than 2k gold. This is not fun. So I've got the Monomune built. I think it's called Monomune from the start. Yeah. I've got the Monomune built, I've got a long sword, and uh, I've got my um, Berserker Greaves going, 
And I'm not having a lot of hope for my team right now, despite the other team not having an upfront tank. Um, they do have heals, of course, in Soraka. And they have a lot of damage. And my team is suffering from that damage. Because, you know, we're not building as defensive as we should. Scion, I'm pretty sure, is going AP. And, yeah, LeBlanc just went too far right there. And she gets taken out. She did get Gragas, but, oof, a beautiful uh, double kill there. I want to back up and see that again, if you'll forgive me. But you see her, you know, we take out LeBlanc. Because I'm pretty sure I get it with an artillery. You see right about here, the artillery goes up. The barrier falls off. Boom! I managed to pick off Soraka and Karthus. So that was pretty cool. That was fun for me, getting a nice double kill. I needed it, to be honest with you. But uh, as I was saying, um, Scion. Yeah, no, Scion's actually going AD in this one. He's going AD Bruiser. Uh, so that was good, actually. You know, if he's going AP, that would have been bad. And <laughs> Annie flashed right into my living artillery right there. I'm almost wondering if that would be a top five fails as she flashed forward right into my living artillery. If she didn't flash, it actually would have missed. I wanted to die uh, to the tower, but no such luck. So I'm going to go blow up on LeBlanc <laughs> for all the good it did because uh, Soraka just heals it right back. <sighs> So I pick up the Bilgewater Cutlass and a dagger as I am working straight for the Blade of the Ruined King right now. As I've said on other ADs that I've played, they do stack. The, build, the uh, Blade of the Ruined King and the Blood Razor do stack in the bonus mad magic damage that they do. Couple that with Kog'Maw's W, which I have maxed out first in this game. You're talking serious health shredding per hit. Plus, you get the bonus attack speed from both of them. Plus, the bonus attack speed from your W. Now, I actually flashed ahead there and threw down my um, ooze strip in order to save um, Gragas and Lux from getting taken out. And you see right here, just casually throwing out living artillery and eventually they kind of get the idea and back off and I throw my ooze line out in a diagonal form in front of the team making sure that they're going to have to cross that and again just trying to use that living artillery trying to keep the uh, super minion off my tower so yeah I already have an attack speed of 1.8 which means I'm actually not that far off from max attack speed And I am charging up uh, the Monomune as quickly as can be. So... And see, this is another problem that a team faces when they're chasing another team. Is you will often... Uh, just, just look at the chunk damage on the Blanc. And even though she manages to dash away, she didn't get away from the Lux Laser. Again, just... I had no idea what I was doing on that barrier. But there goes the ooze out as my team continues to engage. And now I'm going to play the runaway game. I'm going to focus down Sivir. And I do die. I'm trying to stick with Annie. I should have gone Karthus. But I did manage to get Annie when I blew up. And then Gragas manages to get nice double kill using his ulti. Barrier the damage from... Um, from Karthus, and then getting the rolling barrel out on Annie. That was a really great play by Gragas there, if you go back and watch it. Um, really good in getting the last two kills and keeping our uh, base safe from the uh, enemy team. So there we go. I've already got uh, the Blood Razor. I already have the King Blade. So I have a 1.9 attack speed already. And no, I think I just spit in the microphone. I'm sorry. Yeah, so I already got a 1.9 attack speed. I'm already doing a ton of uh, damage plus um, bonus damage. You know, I already got 204 attack damage. So, yeah, we got some really strong uh, damage starting to go on. We got Lux. And I just go in there and start hammering away, which, in truth, not the smartest idea. 
And that was a nice Lux laser. I'm trying to use my artillery because I can't afford to get close at this point. I already wasted out too much of my health. And yeah, like I said, this is what a team will suffer. And Soraka thinks she's going to stand against me. She barriers. I just cut through it. And oh, she gets help. And I'm trying to get close enough. And damn it. Oh, well. Talk about a gruesome death, man. Uh, you blow up. <laughs> I don't think there's a, a, a death equally as gruesome in this game as Kog'Maw. I really don't. But yeah, a chasing enemy team follows the fact that they're going to be constantly running head in to pokes like Singularity and, and Binding and Roll Out the Barrel. You know, they're going to constantly be running into that. So that's really tough when you're the chasing team. The other team has a lot of poke and keep away. Or even just some, it's still very strong. You can see just how much damage just one spit can do uh, under the W right there. Now I'm just trying not to get hit by the obvious pokes. And I'm trying to get in uh, whatever I can. And Fortunately, Gragas moved far enough away to not be a victim of the full combo. And Sivir being caught out just melts. And beautiful ulti, and oh, <laughs> it doesn't get much better than that. I want to go back and look at that in slow motion, man. All right, let's just slow this down. Look at that, He's, he has everybody trapped. Boom! Unfortunately, it does knock them out of the way of the Lux Laser, but it's still enough. Man. <laughs> Just obliterate the entire enemy team <laughs> with a beautiful ulti. They had no way out, so they couldn't get out of the Jarvan ult. And that just set them up for a massive amount of burst damage coming in. So great job by Jarvan, Lux, and um, Gragas right there to just set up a perfect annihilation on the enemy team. So I picked up another dagger. I'm not 100% sure what I'm going for, but as you see, we're just going to rip through this tower now. We have the damage to do so, and I'm pretty sure Jarvan was hoping he'd die, but it didn't work. And I'm throwing out the poke. I want this inhibitor bad, even if it costs me, and unfortunately, there's a sliver of health left on it. And there we go. The poke into the face, and yeah, the boomerang blade's not going not gonna to hit. And dropping down the poke, dropping down the poke, and yeah, she almost bought it there. And he, he, Saya knows he's hitting the wrong one, and he's unfortunately going to get taken out. And I managed to flash ahead, but I know I'm in trouble at this point because I'm slowed, so I'm trying to pick up the health sigil. There we go, and there's the ooze, and oh man, I am so low right now, this is not good. So I'm going to do what I can, and that's stay back and throw uh, Artillery Ooze down, and BAM! I managed to snipe off Karthus right there. And continuing to throw that Ooze out, uh, throwing out the damage, making sure people are forced to move, trying to keep them off of... Uh, Jarvan didn't know that you could actually uh, drop his ulti right there, I guess, but... I managed to snipe off Annie as well, so using that living artillery with the uh, Monomune, giving me the ability to throw tons of uh, damage out, tons of, um, not to sound like freak, but yeah, tons of damage out, and it's still being able to keep at range, and LeBlanc just suffering, and I know it's her clone, but it's 25 gold, so I'll take it. You know, it's like a free minion. And no, no, you're not getting me this time that easy. And Soraka is just going to end up getting obliterated. As I'm now starting to hit that Kog'Maw mode, where he's not somebody you want to, you, you know, you want to be against. You know, he's one of those hyper carries where he can just do so much damage. I mean, we all know the strategy of building entire teams around protecting Kog'Maw, and even though that's not the strategy here. I, you have, you know, you do hit that point with Kogma, especially if you go AD, where you just become that that damage dealing terror. You know, so I've got a 2.2 attack speed right now, so I've almost managed to max that out. I really forget what I'm trying to build at this point. 
I think I'm trying to build possibly the Ionic Spark, which I don't know if that's the greatest idea in Kog'Maw or not. I probably should have gone more lifesteal or more more straight up damage. Even a um And yes, I am standing there. Yes, I am taking damage. Yes, I will die, but I have my passive. So I managed to take out um, Annie with that, and that allows also the killing of Soraka. And then Scion, uh, a little too busy to do much else. Not sure who he's trying to ulti, but it ain't working. So now Scion's got a little bit of trouble going on. Yeah, Scion, you're really hidden. And, well, Scion does exactly what he can. He just decides to tank the minion wave, getting up to full health. He's pretty tanky. This will keep the minion wave from getting to them. And, yes, they can get to our inhibitor, but without a minion wave, they can't get to our towers. So that was a good play on Scion's part uh, after everything is said and done. Oh, that's right. I went for the hurricane. So that I could deal out multiple damage on targets provided that the enemy team, provided the enemy team's minions are not around and oh, just missing the laser and yeah she's dead she's not going anywhere our main focus on the enemy team right now is um leblanc and or soraka you know in no particular order and nice ulti but not gonna be enough yeah it was a good try though on gragas's pot now my team is starting to look threatening you know, now we've got Jarvan in that big tanky resistance scene. We got plenty of damage now out of Gragas and LeBlanc's more comfortable. Uh, now me having the Hurricane, I can clear the minion waves quickly. I can deal out plenty of damage. I've got Monomune fairly charged, so I got more uh, damage out of that. 229 damage, 2.4 attack speed, pretty much maxed out. Just point one more, and you can see just how badly I chipped Soraka there in just three hits. and. I honestly thought LeBlanc was going to nail me. I don't use my barrier very effectively in these games. Sometimes I think I should just take something else. And doing plenty of damage to Lux, but not enough. And, yeah, LeBlanc's going to find out that's a bad idea. She's a little too squishy now. Yes, she could burst me down in the full combo, but this LeBlanc has not used a full combo. So I don't care, man. I'm just I'm just trying to go as nuts as I can. You know, I get Scion. You know, I'm like, frick it, I'll take Tibbers. That's 50 gold. Hammer the tower out. And I finish up Monomune. I don't care. I actually I don't care if I die at this point, and I'm going to. So I just let myself die. I run into Karthus and just throw up whatever damage I get. I'm blowing up on him. Uh, right away and you can see that actually was very beneficial as I get an assist out as my team just annihilates him. So Scion in trouble right now but ooh big body slam but I guess he didn't have the cooldown and almost got LeBlanc who flashed out of the barrel explosion just in time. So, just Lux and uh, Gragas right now, but they're very strong, although they do have a Soraka up on the other side, and Annie's come up as well. You know, that's kind of another drawback for the enemy team. The majority of their damage is magic. LeBlanc, Annie, uh, Soraka, and Karthus. It's four out of five that's magic damage, and Sivir's not doing all that well. And when it comes to terms of attack damage, we have Scion, Jarvan, and myself. And then we have Lux and Gragas. So we have a decent balance of AD and AP in terms of damage. Like I said, plus we got that upfront tank. And right now, at least, where everything stands, Kog'Maw just outclasses um, Sivir in terms of being uh, a tank. Now, yes, I do end up dying there, but the damage I put on, on the enemy team was worth it. And you're about to see that just come to fruition here. Gragas just patiently waiting, and there you go. He was waiting for Sivir Spell Shield to fall, and Karthus didn't get Jarvan, but we just aced them out, and the damage I put out on the enemy team made for the difference there. And not enough time. They're going to be able to cut through these towers and then finish this up, and there you go, folks. That's the end of it. I managed to go 14-9-24, 
Um, the other big carrier on our team, of course, Carthus at 14, 6, and 17. Not Carthus, uh, Gragas. So, you know, two big a an AD and a nice AP carry. But the rest of my team did very well. Is also Jarvan, you know, if a tank doesn't die a lot in ARAM, to me he's not quite doing his job. Even though he did build some damage, he was also tanky. And then Scion as well, 5, 10, and 12. And then Lux, a fairly respectable 7, 6, uh, and 16. The other team, uh, Karthus, of course, 12, 10, and 21. And LeBlanc, 10, 10, and 10. Perfect across the board. Um, let's see, Annie, 12, 8, and 20. You know, it, it wasn't that far behind. It was a fairly even match. But I really think what started making the difference is when our, when our upfront bruisers, got, uh, you know, tankiness kicked in. Uh, and they were able to get in there and just deal out so much damage. And then a couple lucky catches with the uh, Gragas Jarvan combos, followed up by a Lux Laser. And then in the end, um, like I said, in terms of AD, they had Sivir. I was playing Kogma and Kogma. You don't really need to know how to play them, uh, nor do you need, really need to know how to play Sivir. And Kogma just outclasses Sivir in the long run right now until she gets a rework a true rework um you know she's not going to be one of the really strong ad's for a while uh again i don't think and finally like i said the, the last fatal flaw of their team four out of five in ap damage and soraka sustain although strong in the early part was just not enough to overcome our damage in the end so they had a strong team. They had plenty of poke. They did good early, but we managed to get some uh, lucky engages, some good engages. And like I said, we just eventually managed to outpace them into the later game. So that's it for this round, folks. Until next time, this is One Big Bugger signing out, and I will see you then.